British doctors said to continue treatment of a two-year-old boy was not in his, quote, best interest. In other words, doctors in the government sentenced little Elfie Evans to death and made him a prisoner of the state. The world became a little darker on Saturday, April 28th, after it was learned that Elfie Evans died. The 23-month-old from Liverpool, England, has been in many hearts and minds since the world heard about his family's legal battle with the British government. It's not surprising if this is the first time you're hearing about Elfie. The mainstream media did as little as it could to inform the public of this story and the huge ramifications of what happens when the state becomes the arbiter of one's death. This is a story of murder by the state. Elfie suffered from a neurodegenerative brain condition and was on life support. His parents, Tom and Kate, wanted to keep their son on ventilation, but lost their legal challenge from the control of the state health care system through the Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool. Tom and Kate then wanted to remove Elfie from the British health care system and take him to an Italian hospital, but the doctor said to continue treatment was, quote, not in Elfie's best interests. In other words, these doctors sentenced Elfie to death. Both Italy and the Vatican, at the behest of Pope Francis, said they would care for the toddler. Italy made the arrangements, which included making Elfie an honorary citizen, and a helicopter was waiting for the moment Elfie could be freed. His parents wanted this. But the British government said no. And then they put a slew of police officers in front of the hospital so that the toddler was barred from leaving. He became a prisoner to the state. Elfie was taken off of the ventilator on Monday, and the doctors predicted he would die soon after. But little Elfie didn't die. He battled on his own, without oxygen, water, or nutrients for nearly five days, at times being helped by his father giving him mouth to mouth because his lips had turned blue. And still the government said no. Tom let the world know that Elfie passed away in a Facebook post stating, my gladiator lay down his shield and gained his wings. To be sure, a murder took place. Little Elfie did not commit any crime, but because of his disease, he was a burden to the all-controlling state a burden that must vanish, as if he never existed. Anyone who had read George Orwell's 1984 recognizes the devastation of this philosophy of socialist control. Big Brother's control of life, of information, extended to the media, which chose to disregard the story. Twitter scrubbed that Elfie Evans hashtag from its trending so as not to make people feel humanity. Not one of the mainstream media webpages had a headline about Elfie within 12 hours of the announcement of his passing. He was gone from our thoughts, making room for Kanye's tweets, President Trump's Michigan rally, and the bashing of Sarah Sanders at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. But The Economist got in a final punch, claiming that the parents, the Pope, and the Italian government were duped. They report that the British judge who adjudicated the case said Elfie's advocates were, quote, fanatical and deluded. We live in a world where advocating for a little boy's life is delusional. The sanctity of life is officially dead. I have hoped that little Elfie is alive with our father, but I concede that as a culture, we have long murdered the meaning of a life. Because now everyone, even a two-year-old, might as well be called a clump of cells. Until next time, please do all you can to stay healthy, America.